Hello, my name's Colin from hdcctv.co.uk. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find, install, and use our mobile app that works with our AHD 1080p recorders and our 4 megapixel IPN VRs. The app is called XIQ Mobile CMS, uh, and it's available on the Android Play Store as well as the iOS App Store. So I'm going to do the demo using an iPad, but the settings are the same for, for all devices. So if you go to the App Store or Play Store, and then search for XIQ Mobile. And then you'll get the option of XIQ Mobile CMS, CMS standing for Central Management System. So select that one, download it. Once it's downloaded, open the app. So the first thing you see is, can you send notifications? I always click yes, it doesn't do any harm. You can always turn that off again in the settings of the device. Okay, so now we need to add the recorder you've got, you've bought from us onto the system. So if you go to config on the left hand side, and this is the device setting screen. Now on the top right hand corner, we've got a plus button. If you touch that, and then you've got the, the device setting screen here. So device name, you can leave it whatever you like. Let's call it demo just for the, just for the purpose of this video. Uh, now login type, you can choose between IP domain or device ID. Device ID is probably the easiest one to do. If you don't want to mess about with router settings and you're not knowledgeable in IT, then this is the easy one for you. Um, your recorder has a unique device ID code, a P2P code. And if you add that information into this app, that will find it. It doesn't matter about your router settings, it will just find it. So for this, this video, I'm going to use the easy method and use the device ID. So select device ID. And now to add the device to the system. There's two, two methods. You can either scan a QR code from the top of the recorder or you can manually enter it. I'll, I'll do the, the uh, difficult way, the manually entering it, just to make it hard, but if you want to do the scan, you touch the blue um, QR code thingy, allow it to access the camera, and then you would scan the code from the top of the recorder into the, the box here. But for this, purpose, this video, I'm going to do it in a manual way, so I'm going to touch on just right of the blue square where it says, please click on the left picture, and that allows the... Um, the keyboard to come up and you can enter the code. Now if I just switch over to the screen that the recorder has and I'll show you where that code can be located. Okay, so right click with the mouse to bring up the menu at the bottom and left click onto info and then scroll to the bottom of that little page and you have a P2P ID there that is relevant to your machine. Alternatively, go to main menu, system and then info and that same information will be on that page there. Okay, so that's the code entered. Uh, media port would be default set to 9000. Username is admin and the password is admin. Now, if you haven't set that up in your recorder, not a problem, just leave it blank. Or if you change the password from something else, pop that in there and then click the save button top right hand side. Then the device appears. There's the cameras from the, from the, uh, the system. Now you notice the quality is quite low. There's a reason for that. That's to keep your uh, data allowance usage down. Uh, and obviously, you don't need to see a really high resolution um, image on a small screen. However, you can if you want to. So let me show you how you do that. So first of all, let's get rid of the stuff on the left. Let's get rid of that menu. And so we've got larger screens, four nice large screens there. Let's select the bottom left one. And then down the bottom, the fourth icon from the bottom, the one that's got that one there, look has options. You've got mobile stream, which is the one that you're on now. You've got a higher resolution substream. Let me just bring that up full screen. So let me just switch that back. So mobile stream, quite grainy, quite sort of soft and pixelated. Mobile stream, a lot sharper. This is the, uh, sorry, this is the substream. And then we've got the highest resolution, which is the mainstream. So this is four megapixel. Now if I just show you I can zoom in I can just pinch on the screen and zoom in and look around the picture so you can see it's fairly clear there there we go to bring back split screen you can either select on this icon here and bring up the option of uh, split screen or uh, six-way view 
up to 36 wave view. Okay, other things this thing can do, um, if you've got a camera that's a pan tilt zoom camera, right hand side icon will open up the pan tilt zoom settings screen. Or if you've got any of our motorized cameras, you, operate, you can operate them via this. If you've got multiple, say if you had 16 cameras and you're looking at a four, four camera view, you can flick between views here, first set of four, second set of four, etc, etc, and just keep going. Next is the full screen button, that just gets rid of all the menus. And we've got the different screen options here I showed you a minute ago. Next button along will just stop all screens, so I'll just show you that, it'll just cancel all screens, so I need to bring that back up. Now to bring all the screens back up, you can just click on the where it says demo and drag and drop that there and that will drop all the cameras in. Or if you want, you can just pick an individual one up and just drop it. This one is just a simple stop start button for the, the selected screen, so you can stop an individual one if you wanted to. The star button is for saving a channel as a favorite. As you see on the left hand side now, we've now got a favorites channel. So if I set channels three and four, sorry, yeah, three and four as favorites, so I select three and four, and then you'll see in here, if I wanted to just drag those across, I could just have the two favorites. Okay, now down the left hand side, oh, sorry, down the bottom still, we've got um, obviously the, the substream mainstream settings I said here. Substream is a good good quality, but not taking too much data setting, so that's a good uh, good option. Next to that one is a record button. So just bring that up there on Substream and um, record that. This is now recording to the iPad, and it'll be in the the, um, the gallery of the iPad, the recording, also the stills as well. I'll show you those in a second. So that's a bit of recording video, and if I just take a still, there we go. Now when I go to record on the left hand side, there's the recording. And then when I go to image, there's the snapshot image. You notice it's quite grainy because it's that substream. Let's just go back and try that again. Let's do a mainstream photo. There we go. So image. It's a lot better. Okay, uh, and then config is where we were before, which has got the device screen. Next to that is an alarm uh, option. Here you can click on the cog top right hand side and you can enable or disable push notifications for the recorder. So any motion triggers you've got set up, when, as soon as you get a motion activation, it'll pop up a little um, message on the screen. And it also do that when the app is closed as well. So it's uh, pushing it to the front of the screen so you're notified straight away when there's motion to tri uh, triggered there. Uh, and then favorites is just showing you the list of items you've chosen in the favorites section. Help is uh, basic instructions. And then the only one I haven't covered is, is playback. So on the left hand side, you've got the calendar. Let's pick some channels. Let's pick those those two channels there. Actually, that's other four. Uh, and then search. So now at the bottom here, you've got a timeline going starting from um, midnight and going across. So we see we're, we're about 9, 10 a.m. here, so it's, um, it's just showing you from midnight to 10 a.m. Uh, the top out channel one you can see has been constantly recording apart from when I rebooted it about uh, 5.30 this morning. And then you've got a few motion triggers on channel two and then some intelligent stuff on three and four. So let's just hit play. So because channel one is recording constantly, that's the only one that's showing. As soon as it gets to an activation on the, the other cam cameras, as soon as the timeline gets across to it, the other screens will appear. You can, of course, get rid of that now. You can also get rid of that as well. You can bring it up full screen. You can also record it to the machine, the uh, iOS device, or take snapshots as you're watching it as well. Now, to move along to a different time point, let's go to say eight o'clock this morning. You scroll. Oh, sorry, hang on. Let's just go back to config. Let's bring that window up. I didn't. I forgot to click the synchronization. So all four are synchronized. So when I let's just play that. So when I scroll the timeline across, it goes to all four. Let's go to where there's a bit of motion, about there. And as you can see, it's playing back its recordings. 
Okay, that's it. I hope you found that helpful. I'm Colin from HDCCTV. You can always come on our website, have a look at the equipment we sell, or give us a call on 01952 505 696. Thanks for watching.